Uh, you might have heard about the uh, pillars of observability, which is, uh, these are some of the things you need to have in order to have insights into your distributed system. You need logs to need to know what is happening inside your components. You need traces to know what happens in between your, the components of your system. And you need metrics to trend and to see what, what is actually happening. Uh, today, we're going to zoom into the metrics part, specifically uh, a tool called Prometheus. Um, yes, Prometheus, it's an, it's an open source systems monitoring and alerting toolkit. My name is uh, Nils Otto Johansen. I work at a company called Norsk Helsnet. Uh, we are connecting the dots of health healthcare Norway, actually both physically through uh, network infrastructure between the hospitals and different institutions, and also by software, by uh, delivering, for instance, Health ID, which is the identity provider for every healthcare worker, and also the uh, healthenorge.no site, which uh, I guess every Norwegian got to know during the pandemic, because that's uh, where you got your certificates and stuff for, the, for that thing. Uh, enough of that. Prometheus. Uh, just uh, uh, first, I've, I've been a long time, uh, or a few years at least, Prometheus user. I'm not uh, affiliated with the project in any other way, so this uh, the talk is uh, based on uh, experience and documentation. Just a disclaimer there. Prometheus started in uh, a little bit more than ten years ago in a company called SoundCloud. They were they needed a, a monitoring system for their uh, dynamically changing environments. So there were some engineers down there which uh, came up with this SoundCloud, this uh, Prometheus tool. It's based on the IDs from an internal Google project, as many things else, which was called Borgmon. And if you know the Kubernetes uh, story, you know that uh, Kubernetes was named Borg. So, so Prometheus and Kubernetes, they, they are kind of close friends, but um, but uh, two different projects dif developed differently. But uh, then, uh, as uh, many other uh, projects as well, uh, Prometheus was donated to the CNCF and is now graduated and a part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So here is is a uh, kind of an architectural view of uh, Prometheus and uh, some parts around it. You can see down at the right, the, the Prometheus server itself does not have these dashboarding uh, features. So uh, down right, you can see some tools used. Mainly Grafana is used for uh, dashboarding in Prometheus. One, uh, one important aspect of Prometheus is that it is a pool-based system. You have a, a Prometheus server, which is pooling metrics from different endpoints. And this is where the dynamic nature of Prometheus com comes in, because Prometheus has uh, functionality to discover which targets it's going to scrape. So when, uh, so when uh, for instance, Prometheus, Prometheus is running inside Kubernetes, and you instrument the uh, different services with, uh, with some information, then Prometheus scrapes that information and, and finds the endpoints to, to scrape. Uh, well, yeah, uh, and um, uh, further on, we're going to focus on the Prometheus core, core things. So you're not going to learn how to make flashy uh, dashboards, unfortunately. Um, some other talk. The core unit in Prometheus is a metric, and uh, what is a metric? Well, it's a, it's a string uh, composed like this. Every metric has a name, which is uh, supposed to describe the metric itself. It also has a set of labels, which is key value par pairs, categorizing the different uh, uh, measurements of that uh, metric. And of course the value, which is always a number, and it's a uh, 64-bit uh, float value. So these metrics are scraped from the endpoints, as I said. Like this, uh, the uh, endpoints are is exposing a plain text HTTP uh, interface, 
And, and you can see the same, the same metric name is scraped several times with different numbers. I actually have a Kubernetes cluster running. Um, so I thought I'd just show you. If I curl the, um, this is just locally. So you can see uh, this number, oh, this is a kind of a made up uh, messaging system. Um, so uh, the number of messages processed is uh, increasing for every time. Every time I refresh the, go to the URL. Oh, you can't see, I am seeing, <laughs> sorry. You should yell. Yeah, you can see, sorry. Here you can see the, uh, the, I mean, just curling the endpoint um, at 8080, well, it's the same thing you saw on the slide, but you can see the numbers are increasing, and at every time interval, Prometheus is uh, storing uh, this information in its, time in its time series database. Time series database, what is that? Uh, one way, kind of a simplified way to think of it, is like a, a giant uh, table. So the metrics are placed into the table with the different, uh, the metric itself, and for each scrape interval, you, uh, I said Prometheus is scraping the metrics on, on regular intervals. Each, uh, each time uh, Prometheus scrapes, it's storing a new value in the table. Yes. Uh, I um, might, may have been lying a little bit about the the types of the it, the metrics being only uh, an integer because Prometheus has some metadata about the different uh, metrics, uh, saying which type of metric it is. And this met these types are used later on when you query the data, so Prometheus can make some assumptions about what it's uh, what the what the number is. So there are different types of metrics. There are there is a counter, which is an ever increasing number. For instance, the number of requests to a site. It's a gauge. That is a number that can go up and down, like a speedometer or the heart rate of a, of a first time uh, NDC speaker. Um, and you have histograms and summaries, which are more statistically uh, um, based uh, types of metrics, which in histograms you categorize the, me the, the measurements into buckets. So you can, you can for instance, say that this many uh, requests has been fulfilled within 200 milliseconds or things like that. Okay, so now we have ingested uh, the data into Prometheus and we have it stored in the time series database. It's time to query the data. So I'll try to switch to my browser and, and then move it over here so you, also you can see it as well. So Prometheus has a, a, a simple but effective user interface for, for exploring and querying the data. Um, I'll try to make a, a query here. You, you remember the metric we were, uh, we were ingesting just recently was messages processed total. So then you see we have um, several, several metrics uh, Interested, you can also see that there's there's uh, f more metadata here than it was in the uh, curl example. It, that's kind of important because uh, Prometheus adds quite a few metadata to the to the metrics from Kubernetes itself. So you can see, for instance, you have the namespace this pod is running. You have the pod name and and things like that. Uh, so let's, uh, now it's kind of complicated, let's try to filter, so Prometheus querying is like filtering, slicing and dicing data and making, uh, making use of it. So for instance, let's say I'd like to see only for this one pod. Ooh. Yep. So then we filter the filter the data in this syntax. This is kind. This is called PromQL, the language you're using to to filter data in Prometheus. So you, you have uh, filters like this, and you can also do aggregation, of course. Um, so let's say I'll like to see the sum. Um, no, not there. So 
awesome by Q name, for instance. So we'll will sum by Q name. Uh, it's go not going to be uh, very surprising the result. Oh yeah, it's going to be surprising. What I'm missing uh, in the pod name? Aha, yeah. uh -huh. thank you. Ah, there. Thank you. <laughs> so, so then you can aggregate and and make more use of the data I, I inside here. There's there's also a um, graph view, so you can you can see you see the data over time. You can also uh, see the data on a different time than now by um, using the sliders there. Uh, so uh, this is where the uh, you can see this is a counter and the my example is just increasing in the counter regularly so it's uh, it's not just such an Im impressive graph but um, Prometheus is the query language in Prometheus is also equipped with a lot of functions so I'm going to demonstrate a function called rate and this is where the type of the metric comes in because uh, this is a counter type metric it's always increasing and then Prometheus can uh, can handle this as a counter. So even if the even if the service is restarting, then the the counter is uh, is reset because the there's a new pod uh, and, uh, and don't don't know what the number of the previous pod. But then since it's a counter, Prometheus can say if it's a drop in the number, then it's it's uh, kind of smoothed. It's uh, always regarded as a increasing number. Okay, I'm talking myself away. Uh, I'm, I'm going to explain the rate function. And the rate function is, is uh, doing just that. It's telling you, it's calculating the rate of increase over a period of time. So if we, for instance, say, oh, uh, let's try. Yes. So now the graph is showing the rate of increase per second of this, this counter. You, you need to go to the documentation and, and, and uh, look for yourself, but if Prometheus has a lot of different, different functions and ways to slice and dice data, and you can, let's say you look, you'd like to compare the rate of, uh, the rate of messages right now with, uh, with the rate of mes messages from the uh, same day last week, for instance, to, to alert if, if it's a drop. Yeah, there's the possibilities are endless. Uh, yes, so we're back to the slides, are we? No, that's the slides. Uh, Oh yeah, and there's also uh, just one thing. If you if you're interested in, it's kind of it's a good thing to sit in the UI and and try to make uh, sense of the data. And uh, one thing that is kind of hidden, but it's Prometheus has it. Every name uh, metric has a label called underscore underscore name. So if you do this uh, query, then you'll get the the query names. Uh, and you can filter it out. So, so that's a, it's a good way to sit there and explore, finding the different values. I'm running a little bit out of time, so I'm going to skip that one. Uh, one thing I, uh, I have been kind of struggling with uh, getting to know Prometheus is that there's a lot of metrics inside there. Uh, often you're given, you're, you have a team operating Kubernetes for you and you're giving a, a access to Prometheus to to con to look at your services and then there's a plethora of uh, metrics and you need to make sense of it just uh, remember that this there are metrics on several different levels you are at infrastructure level like uh, network and stuff like that kubernetes is putting a lot of, of uh, metrics inside there your application is uh, is monitored by kind of the external signals from the application and the it's also recommended to use a library inside your application and provide metrics like more functional metrics. So it's to me at least has been a good uh, thing to think about at which level am I looking at the metrics right now. And then 
Prometheus is also, uh, and the first architecture slides show that we have uh, possibility to alert. There's, uh, there's an alert manager in Prometheus which also uses this, this query language. So you could um, write these queries and make them return zero or, or, or one, depending on the state of your alert. And, and configure that as an alerting rule, and then you can have alerts sent to your your system. And, and of course, also dashboarding, uh, like in Grafana, um, or different systems, you can uh, you you using these. You have gotten to know your metrics, and you can make wonderful dashboards. If you come to another talk. So that was uh, the one uh, the one pillar of observability. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, well, uh, the stands may might be closed, but uh, you can uh, talk to people from North Kelsnet out in the expo area. Thank you. <laughs>